And when there is a clear need for action, I think that we have an obligation, and I certainly do, to remind people that we should set aside politics and pride and accomplish something that the people of Tennessee want us to get accomplished. It is possible and it is important that we find a way uh, to remove individuals who are a threat to themselves or to our society, to remove them from access to weapons. I'm asking the legislature to bring forth thoughtful, practical measures to do that, to strengthen our laws, to separate those dangerous people from firearms, while at the same time preserving the constitutional rights of the people of this state. Tennessee Republican Governor Bill Lee has caved on his opposition to gun control just over two weeks after the Nashville Christian School shooting, calling for state legislators to pass red flag laws. Red flag law orders allows the judge to authorize agents and police to go into an individual's home and confiscate their guns for a certain period of time, after which they may petition the court to have their Second Amendment rights back, allowing them to have their guns returned. In most cases, the citizens do not know their guns are being seized until police knock on their door and take their rights away. Agents and officers knocking on citizens' homes and taking the guns away is very concerning over Americans' Fifth Amendment rights to due process. Connecticut was the first state to adopt a red flag law in 1999, but it did not prevent the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting from happening in 2012. California, which has the strictest gun control laws in the country and the most active shooter incidents, passed a similar law in 2014. Governor Lee's support of red flag laws comes despite the fact that it would not have prevented the Nashville school shooting as neither the police nor the shooter's family knew about their plans. The shooter had purchased their guns legally and had no criminal record. The shooter's parents had urged them to sell their only gun and were unaware that they had purchased more, which they kept hidden. Nonetheless, here's Governor Bill Lee's explanation for urging legislators to pass red flag laws. And I also said that I thought we should get it done by this year. And by this year, what I mean is by this legislative session. Um, it is possible to get this done. I think we can work together. I've been working with the legislature for the past two weeks about next steps. There are a lot of details yet to hammer out, but let me tell you what I think is needed as we move forward. First, I'm asking the General Assembly to bring forth a new order of protection law. Our current law is proven and effective in many, circumstance, in many circumstances, especially uh, with regard to domestic violence. But this new, stronger order of protection law will provide the broader population cover safety from those who are in danger to themselves or to the population. Protective orders are led by law enforcement. They have a high standard burden of proof. There is due process, requires clear and convincing evidence that a person that has shown that they are a real threat to themselves or to others, that person, that individual should not have access to firearms. Our judicial system is prepared. It has years of experience in dealing with orders of protection. The process is there. They'll be well equipped for this new order. Uh, I believe that this will protect victims, that it'll hold dangerous people accountable and away from firearms and that it'll preserve constitutional rights at the same time. You basically said there's a lot of definitions to red flag yeah, laws. Yeah. In your mind, these two proposals that you, is this, does this fall under a red flag umbrella or is you know, you where know does what, this fall? So what, uh, what, what, what it falls under is a law that I think is appropriate for our state today given the circumstances we're in. We, we decided to we decided to address this in a way that we thought would bring people together in our legislature with, with what we know about the, the uh, situation in our state and the order of protection laws that we have and to understand how best to do something in, in short fashion that would be substantive and effective and create a, a safer environment. We think now is that time. I certainly believe it's that time, and I'm hoping and hopeful that people will not have preconceived ideas, will be open to discussing and bringing forth ideas and saying, you know, we have to, we have to move forward. This is our moment to, to lead and to give the people of Tennessee what they deserve. This would be 
different a different order of protection law that would deal with those who are a danger to others, those who are a danger to themselves, that goes beyond the scope of orders of protection that exist in Tennessee today. This legislation would impact the broader community, and it would impact people who are a danger to the broader community, not just to schools and children. Situations like what happened in Kentucky yesterday might be averted by a piece of legislation that we're talking about delivering today. And this morning you talked a lot about the legislation that you're putting forward. For people who think that what you're putting forward isn't enough, what's your message to them? I think we, uh, we've said there are steps and we should never stop. We should never stop creating a safer environment. Subscribe to our channel because we the people are endowed by our creator with these unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and guns.